If you've watched some of my previous videos, then you know I like the opportunity to kind of compress some shop space by putting a couple of tools in the same box. A good example of this is the Xtool M1, where you get a, not only a 10 watt laser, but also a material cutter in the same container, and it works really well. However, it's not the only tool on the market where, where you get this opportunity to scale up multiple tools. For example, this is the Snapmaker A250T, and this is a three-in-one tool. It's not only a laser, it's also a 3D printer and a CNC router. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all of the features of this baby Snapmaker, we'll say, and we'll find out if this is the tool for you if, you're, if your shop space is tight. So let's get started. How's it going everybody? Steve here and welcome back to the shop. Now, as I mentioned in the, in the lead in, this, this video is all about stacking some tools. And in this case, we're gonna look at the Snapmaker A250T, which is the baby Snapmaker in the family, but this tool is still quite capable. It provides a proper 3D printer, a CNC router and a laser, of course, because we like to talk about lasers on this channel. Now, what I wanna do is do a quick flyover of, of just the overall manufacturing of this, of this tool, this platform. Then we'll talk about each of the tools individually, and at the end, we'll come up with a bit of a score, and I'll certainly tell you the things I really love about this laser, and you'll hear about some of those as we go. Also, uh, you know, some of the things I think that are still a little problematic, and uh, things they could certainly improve on. So with that little context, uh, let's get going here, and we'll start with the flyover. All right, so I wanted to start with with all, everything kind of stacked up here. And the reason is that, because I wanted to show you the three separate modules uh, in, in one showing here. So the module that's currently mounted here is the 3D printer module. It's a standard, I'd say standard kind of 3D printer, uh, except it's designed really, really well. Power, power and control comes in this cable and your filament goes into this little hole here. I'll, I'll show you as, as we go some of the sample work. It comes out really, really nice. It's a great 3D printer. So next we have the laser module here and if, I'll say if you're a diehard uh, diode laser owner, you're gonna be potentially a little disappointed, at least on the surface here, because this laser module, as you can see, is 1600 watts, uh, 1.6 watt, at a time when most of the diode laser business is headed towards 40 watts. So you might look at that and, and be shied away. We'll, we'll take a look and, and we'll see. It's safe to say that this laser isn't for cutting, it's really for engraving. And, uh, you know, if you assume that and you're happy with that, then you'll be fine. And then last we have the CNC module, which provides an eighth inch collet for eighth inch bits and looks pretty robust. And again, we'll see, we'll see what it looks like. Now, the rest of the framework here is something that you use regardless of which tool you have mounted. So I'll start by saying, if I can push this back a bit, you'll see that that there are these really nice robust uh, uh, guides and i don't know how they work but they're all closed in and and really nice design it keeps all the dust out and it just looks gorgeous so i would give snapmaker full marks for for the design here everything is metal uh it's it it looks great and this, this unit is actually fairly heavy. You're not gonna just pick it up and run like you would with a, with a standard diode laser. Uh, next, we have the handheld display, and you can control everything from here as well as from software, and we'll talk about the software as well. And then you also get this fairly robust power supply. It's still fairly quiet, so it's not like it's a, it has a screaming fan, but it does seem to provide everything we need here. So that's the tool. And uh, what we're gonna do is we'll take each of these and put them through their paces. I'll show you a bit of the software as well, because you really do need it for, for creating the design. And uh, We'll take a look at each of these individual, and since the 3D printer module is mounted here, we'll start with that. All right, so before we can 3D print anything, we have to talk about some software. Now, unlike most 3D printers, you don't use something like Cura. With the Snapmaker, you use their own tool called Luban, and this may be a love-hate relationship for you, but 
On the surface, it does make sense because they are controlling three different tools. So you can see there's a 3D printer selection, a laser and a CNC, and you can also just go to the workspace. But in this case, I'm going, I'm going to do a 3D print and I could select the 3D print and then go and load a file, or they also have a library down below. In this case, I'll pick, I'll pick this uh, spiral vase or vase and it will load up into the workspace. Now, I, I will warn you in advance that this software does not work the same. The workflow is not the same as something like Cura. So you're going to have to learn a few things that are a bit different, especially if you've already played with Cura in the past. And some of them are good. So for example, when I load the vase in, it loaded as a project and it automatically selected all the things I need to make this print really well. And you can see up above here, it did print uh, quite nicely. But uh, later on, I printed a Benchy. Now the Benchy itself, the print is, the print quality is really amazing. Now you'll see some lumps and bumps on the outside and that's because I had to do the setup myself and I'm in a bit of a rush when I'm doing a review so I don't always sit down and go figure out all the settings. So I think what happened here is uh, the temperature of the of the hot of the hot end was a little was a little higher than it should have been, and it made this this extrusion uh, you know a little more liquidy than it than it should have been. But like I said, the the 3D print itself is uh, one of the best I've ever seen, except for some of these blotches, and and it's just tuning to go fix those. But when you want to do the tuning, that's when when you might run into some some real workflow differences compared to Cura because you do have to go hunt for a few things. And that in itself is, uh, you know, a bit of a challenge. I'm sure you, you can learn the workflow if you use the Snapmaker all the time. But I wanted to, when I printed my Benchy, I wanted to set the infill to 20%. And it took me about five minutes and a couple of Google searches to go figure out how to get to the point where I could set the infill. It's there, it's quite powerful. Everything you would ever wanna do is in, is in Luban, but the menus are not what you would expect. So be, keep that in mind. Uh, again, it prints really well. So we can't necessarily hold the user experience completely against Snapmaker, but it, it would be so nice if they just enabled some option to use Cura, for example. Uh, but anyway, once you get the vase in here, like I said, it, in this case, it was a project, so it selected all the right settings. And then I can just go generate the G code. The snap maker's not on, so it's really not gonna do a whole lot here. It will, it will actually generate the G code, but I can't start because the printer's off. And the other option is I could upload a file directly to the printer uh, because this printer is Wi-Fi, which is a very nice option. So. Uh, you can see here where I can export and I can load what's in the workspace, meaning this, and, and print it as I go, or I can export the G code to a file. And then if I was connected, I could also load it into a file on the file system of the printer. So lots of options, but again, the user experience will be quite different than what you may be used to if you've used another 3D printer. Now, the next thing I'm going to look at is the laser module, but before I can do that, we have to convert the Snapmaker from a 3D printer to a laser. And the way I have to do that is I have to remove the, the, the bed, and there's about 12 screws there. I have to unscrew all of those, save those screws, because we're going to need them. Then put the, the hotbed aside and remove the, the 3D printer module as well and put that aside. And then put the three grates and the laser module onto the Snapmaker. Now, when you listen to the name Snapmaker, you assume perhaps that everything will just unplug and then you can plug something new in. It's not that simple. So converting, and I'm showing some highlights here of me actually changing the plates and converting this to a laser. That took about, I don't know, probably 10 minutes of, of real time. Not a lot, but when you think about, you know, cost versus benefit, and we'll talk a bit more about this towards the end of the video, but you have to decide if, if it's worth 
having taking 10 minutes to do that just to say you have a tool that can do a three in one kind of capability here. It might be for some if, you're, if your shop is really small and really I think that's where the snap maker is geared. Anyway, I've, I've got the laser module there. I did a bunch of first time calibration and, uh, and that involved creating a measurement as well as uh, a square on, on a piece of paper to calibrate the camera. It's nice that this, that this laser has a camera built in and we'll look at that now. All right, so now I'm back in Luban again, and you can see I, I have the laser section. I'll skip, I'll just print uh, one of these cases that is already built in. And so I'll select that, and I won't bother saving the previous project. So it loaded all the parts. Now, one of the things I can do here, because I do have a camera, is I can take a picture of what the material looks like. And that's as simple as, just going to the camera capture and, and what it'll do is it'll go capture, I think it's nine frames and you can see them start to pop in here as we go. It takes, I don't know, 10, 10, 15 seconds. And then you can lay that out underneath your material on the workspace. Just an easy way to make sure that you're covering the material and you're not gonna cut off the side of the material. Okay, so I captured, and again, it took nine photos and uh, strung them all together. So I can just say confirm, and you can see what it looks like on the background here. And when I look at my project, I know it's going to fit. With that, all I really need to do is say generate some G code here, and we can load the G code into the workspace and start the job, but of course, before you start the job, you need some goggles. So I'll do that and I'll show you what it looks like when, when it's doing the cutting. Now, the one place you might be disappointed, at least with this model of the Snapmaker 2, is, is the laser. Uh, it's only a 1.6 watt laser, so I'm cutting out that gift box sample and it's cut on some of their sample material. That's one and a half millimeter plywood, which is paper thin, honestly. And this sample cut out took uh, two passes and about 25 minutes. So, you know, if you have dreams of cutting half inch plywood, at least with this version of the laser module, you're gonna be disappointed. Now they do have higher power lasers. So you might wanna opt for one of those if you're looking at a snap maker, at least I would certainly opt for a higher power one. But uh, at the end of the day, the gift box came out, you know, pretty, pretty nicely and it worked. So, you know, it is what it is, but I would definitely go for the higher power one. All right, so we are going to look at the last module here, which is the CNC module. And that of course means we have to do a tool change. So we have to remove the laser module and plug in the CNC module. And we have to remove the, the three metal uh, extrusions that were on the workspace for the laser and replace them with a wooden uh, plate that's used by the CNC. Now, oddly, they use eight millimeter screws to screw in the plate for the 3D printer and the laser, but they use 10 millimeter screws to screw in the plate for the CNC. It's a bit odd, but it's not the end of the world. It's just 10 or 15 more screws to lose. So uh, be careful with it, but they are different lengths. So pay attention to that. So I went back into Luban and selected the CNC project that's on the screen here. It's a, it's a phone holder and it will be cut out of uh, acrylic that they provided. It's just three millimeter acrylic as near as I can tell. And uh, what I did was uh, on screen here, I set, let me get myself out of the way here. Uh, on screen, I set the the working position, working origin. And what the way I did that was I set the X and Y to the center of the material. And then I moved the Z axis down to the point where you can just slide a piece of paper or their calibration card. They provide a, a thin calibration card as well. Uh, just slide it underneath the bit and that's the zero position. So uh, at this point, I really just have to push the go button and when you do, the CNC will start and within, I don't know, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, you'll have a phone stand and it works pretty well. Uh, you know, it's, 
the CNC motor, I'd say, is about comparable to the one you would get with a 3018 uh, CNC that you can buy on Amazon. So it's not it's not a spectacular performer, but it's not terrible either. So it, it does the job it's intended to do. All right, this video has gone on already longer than I had originally intended, but there was a lot to cover here. So we'll wind it down by looking at some of the pros and cons, some things that they did really well. And we'll start with the manufacturing. Uh, the quality is excellent. Uh, this looks like a really high-end tool, and in fact it is, and can certainly be upgraded to even more capability. So the quality is great. The tools themselves are, I would call them above average. The 3D printer is, is above average. The CNC is probably on the high end of the 3018 kind of CNC family. And the laser, while it's underpowered, it works really well. Uh, not part of, of the specific uh, Snapmaker 2, but included by Snapmaker when they sent this to me is the enclosure. Uh, the enclosure, it looks great and it also helps keep the dust inside the box, uh, especially with CNC. And uh, it's also light shielded so you can use the 3D printer without having to worry about wearing goggles around your shop while it's running. And uh, I would say if you're looking at one of these and you want uh, you know, you want that kind of security and, and honestly, you know, enclosed uh, environment for this, then you definitely want to look at that enclosure, even though it is a $399 option, it's probably worth it from, from just a peace of mind perspective. Now on the con side, you'd think there wouldn't be any cons because this, it is a really nice piece of hardware. Uh, I'll start by saying Luban. Luban is not a great piece of software. Uh, it's hard to use. There's settings all over the place and you have to hunt to try and find them. And for some reason, they don't always seem to adhere. So in particular, this example here you're seeing, uh, I set up the CNC, I set the work position and everything was great. I did just for safety, I did a home and then I went back to the work position and you can see what happened here. It rammed the bit into the, into the material and snapped it off. Now, if I was using a carb carbide bit, I would not be happy at this point. So I, I would say, you know, it's, it's a real weak spot for, on the Snapmaker uh, is the whole Luban thing. They really either need to support some of these external tools like Cura and Lightburn, or they really need to step up the game here because Cura and Lightburn are out there. And honestly, if you use either of those, you're gonna look at Luban and say, this is terrible. So, you know, it's it's an issue. Uh, next on the list here is the tool changes. Again, you assume a company that's called Snapmaker would make a tool that you could just unplug and plug something else in, in in a minute and you're ready to go. The reality here is no matter which tool you're using, it has a different plate. So you're changing the workspace plate no matter what when you change tools and that involves at least 16 screws plus the, the tool itself. So you know, it's it's not as simple as, as the name implies. Uh, and finally, we'll start with, with a bit of a philosophical question here, and I've kind of changed my view. Is a three-in-one tool better than three separate tools? And I would like to believe that you can compress a bunch of tools into one piece of real estate in your workshop. The reality is I don't think you can because you're gonna be unhappy with at least one of those tools. Uh, and just some simple math here, this A250T Snapmaker 2 is a around $1,200 to start. That doesn't include the enclosure. Uh, by comparison, uh, you know, if we just pick longer as a, as a, a, a family of, of products, the longer LK4X that I reviewed, and if you didn't see that review, you could click up here. That, that 3D printer is $299 and it's comparable to this. Uh, you know, still in the longer family, uh, but any laser, any 5 watt laser, but the longer Ray 5 5 watt is also $299. And if you're looking for CNC, any of the 3018 uh, CNCs that you'll find on Amazon, even at the pro end, will certainly compare to, to the CNC in this. And those run anywhere from two to three hundred dollars. So you're looking at about 800 bucks here uh, with three separate tools versus you know 1200 to start so if you know if that's if you're okay with that great if you're if you want to pay, pay that premium and let's face it it's a beautiful tool but if you have the real estate 
and you don't want to take the time to change tools and, and spend that extra money, you might not want to consider the Snapmaker. I won't beat on it too much. Really, my, my major gripe is Luban. Anyway, with that, we'll wind down. I'll put a couple of videos up, up above here. Uh, go watch those, and if you do, I'll see you over there. Uh, otherwise, get out there and make your world, and I'll see you next time.